2016, 20, December, excuse me, the Tuesday, October 25th, 2016, 10 a.m. Board of Supervisors regular meeting. The first item on the agenda is to approve the minutes of the October 18th, 2016, regular meeting. Mr. Chairman, I'll move item one. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments on the minutes? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Item one carries. Item number two is to receive and place on file drainage repairs. We have a couple. Drainage district number two, Dayton section six, and just south of 340th Street, we have a beaver dam turned in by Lloyd Stewart. Drainage district number 195, Deer Creek, section 20, we have a blowout in the field tile, again, turned in by Mike Petter. Second, any questions or comments on the drainage repairs? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Item two carries. Item number three is to approve the promotion of Deputy Tony Walter to Patrol Sergeant, effective November 15, 2016, at the salary of $61,592.66 per labor agreement. I guess I'll move number three. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Do we have any questions or comments? Sheriff? Sure. Oh, here comes the sheriff. Well, Tony's back here, and as you, as you can read in that letter that they submitted to you, uh, Tony's been our canine officer for several years and also has taken charge of the Governor's Traffic Safety Bureau. So right now, he will be moving shifts. He will go to the night shift, which is one person down at that moment. Actually, the sergeant down at that moment. He will take that shift over. And then once that sergeant's back, then he'll be moving again. <coughs> so it just complements our Right. Do you have any questions or comments for the chair? I just would say it's nice to see Tony here. Yes, you know, sometimes people get promotions and they don't come, so it's nice to see that. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question. I, 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 live, I live on a farm, so I got. Uh, Do you want to step to the podium, sir? So I suppose. Talk for the time, anyways. And you are. I'm, I'm John William Ashwell. I live on a farm. Three miles east of Fort Dodge, and so uh, like who coordinates the EMS and the fire department? Like who, or who, who takes, who does that? We're, we're working on item number three right now. Down from the bottom, we'll have you come back up, and we'll discuss. Well, that. all right. So when I, when do I ask? So I'll like, what do I ask questions? Down from the bottom for community citizens, citizens opportunity. We'll, let you know. we'll, we'll bring you back up. Do you have a copy of the agenda for the day? Sure. Right here. Right. All right. Can I take this one. Or yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. All right, thanks. Any other questions or comments on the motion of Deputy Tony Walter? Couldn't have picked a better man for the job. All right. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Item three passes. Thank you. Delicious. Item number four is to approve wage increases for correctional officers as follows. Ashley Guthrie from 1581 to 1611 per hour, effective November 13, 2016. Joanne Alvarez, from 1516 to 1548 per hour, effective November 3, 2016. And Austin Pohl, from 1516 to 1548 per hour, effective November 3, 2016. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion we approve these wage increases as previously read. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Item number four carries. Item number five is to approve and authorize the chair to sign a lease agreement for copier with Advanced Systems Inc. and Webster County, Webster County Emergency Management. Seeing no motion, the item dies. Item number six, adopt a resolution directing Alliant Energy to install Destination light in intersection of 390th Street and Lansing Avenue. 
Mr. Chairman, I'll move item six. Second. We have a motion and a second. And Mr. Anthony. Yeah, we have, do have numerous, I call them destination lights throughout the county. And generally, we destination, destination lights are at the intersection of two paved roads. Uh, on uh, Route D68, which is a paved route, bounded on the west by Highway 144, and bounded on the east by uh, Lainson Avenue. Uh, due to the fact that the uh, new co-op's got a new facility, there'd be increased traffic, and it was one of the few remaining locations where we had lights, we uh, went ahead and, and, and uh, are planning to put lights there. Uh, Usually the utility companies, uh, by written memo, was close enough. Uh, a line needed a resolution. That's their policy. So that's why today it's on the agenda for this specific location. They do need a resolution authorized by the board of supervisors. Okay. I have a question. Do, have, have we asked them to change all of our lighting to the LED lights or the brighter lights on the intersections for the city of energy? Not. I, don't know, well, I think that's uh, over a period of time. How we pay the fee is, uh, I think it's per, uh, it's, it's a, it's a, it, it varies among utility companies. Uh, it's kind of inconsistent. We, we just pay sometimes a standard fee and sometimes it's, uh, they don't have a meter on each and every light. So I think it's their, they establish a rate fee and then we pay that. But, uh, so I, don't, I can't answer that specifically. I'm sure the lights will get upgraded to meet the newer technology over time. Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. I was asked a question. So where, where are you putting lights at? Okay. Uh, again, on D68, which is the east to west paved route that goes uh, uh, from P46 to Highway 144, we're putting the light at each what of those intersections. Excuse me? What businesses are around it? Businesses. It's in the, it, this is out in the county. I'm not sure. I, I live in the country. You call it the county. This is where I live. I don't care what your title is. You need to, you need to explain to him. Whoa, he's not whoa, 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 whoa. No, I no, think no. We, he's, we're talking about putting intersection light. Destination light. Destination light or an intersection yeah, light. I live on a county road. highway. It's called Farm to Market. Yeah. And my grandpa was a farmer. I'm not a farmer. But they, they, there's a light on their intersection, you know, where the, where the black tops meet. Yeah, I mean, you call it common sense. Like, I went to school for Iowa State. I went to Iowa State for engineering. Yeah. I have a full ride scholarship. I'm not an engineer. Like, that's not what I do. And I don't know what that has to do with this conversation. Then why are you asking me all these questions about how much money it costs? I just ask, are we looking into, you know, we're changing in your house, you know, the LED lights are coming so in. So have you ever heard of Mid American? They're that's not the provider at this time. That's what I'm saying. Like, we guys confuse things. Like, I don't, I'm not a politician. Like, I don't be, I'm not nice to people. Like, I get no sleep because I work all the time. My brother works overseas. My sister lives here. People call me all the time. When I work at the hospital, people call me all the time. Like, just because you guys try to be polite, like, you ask these questions. Like, I'm an engineer. I ask questions. Like, I try to raise my hand. I think, so who's Randy Will? Like, what does he do at the courthouse? I'm, I'm sorry to introduce myself. I'm Randy Will, the Webster County Engineer. Where did you go to engineering school at? Iowa State University. Where, what, what department? Civil engineers. That's qualification for being a Is this a job interview? Did you have to tell me? Okay. Um, that's, yeah, that's, we're not going to continue the conversation. Your question is credentials. Well, like, you guys ask all these questions, and I, like, I just want to ask, like, I raised my hand the entire time, and you guys ignore me. No. We said we all right, let's move on to another question. question. I'll wait. I'll wait to answer, ask all okay. the questions. Well, because we have citizens' opportunity, one item. You guys see all this stuff. Like, I live everywhere. I'm a citizen everywhere. I'm not a Fort Knox resident, right? But like, I come here to do my business. So I park where I. I try to. Okay, we're going to go back to this item, and we'll give you the opportunity. I want you to touch me, sir. Well, then you're going to have to leave if you're going to keep talking. Well, then I'll stop. I'll be quiet. Okay. Thank you. Any other items on the resolution directing our main energy to install destination light at the intersection of 390th Street and Lansing Avenue? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Oh, I'm sorry, it's a resolution, so we're going to ink aye. Leffler aye. Campbell aye. Singer aye. And Fletcher aye. All aye. <coughs> Item number six carries.
Item number seven is to approve an authorized chair to sign a utility permit from Precision Pipeline to open, cut, and install 30-inch pipeline across 340th Street, west of Garfield Avenue, between Section 36, Township 87 North, and Range 30 West, and Section 1, Township 86 North, and Range 30 West. I'll do item number seven. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. We have a question. So what what what, what business is going to use this pipeline? Randy, would you like to okay. explain? Uh, this has to do with the Coda Access Pipeline. Uh, we previously had agreements. That's not I'm not asking I'm not asking more questions. Okay. Randy still has to respond. All right. Fair enough. Uh, they uh, there are 23 county road crossings that all were to be bored. Uh, last week, they, when they were boring this location, they encountered something in the roadbed that wouldn't allow them to keep on alignment. And so I was contacted by Roger Landsworth from Precision uh, Pipeline, who is a contractor for Dakota Access, and he requested that this site can be open trench. And uh, uh, Roger, they, my road foreman, Dale Anderson, and I met with him, and uh, more or less said that, you know, I would uh, have to fill out her name, he did so, and uh, they, they assured us that when they opened and cut it, they would uh, lay the pipe and then they'd pour flowable mortar and have good compaction. And I want to also add that we have, their bond will cover this activity, that bond is due for one year after completion of the project, so I feel real comfortable taking the exception at this location. And the reason they had to be so precise at this crossing they had a belt station on the north side of the road they had to connect to. Otherwise, I, I asked them why couldn't you just rebore or move it over X number of feet and rebore? They said they had, they had to have this one precise. So, what did they encounter in the roadway that they couldn't bore? I'm not, not too sure. Uh, I, I have a 90 feet back, but uh, it, it must be something uh, large. I, I would assume it was a boulder. I wonder if there's one about a giant snake. Mm -hmm. Is there any traffic questions well, that will disrupt too much well, farm traffic? Uh, coincidentally, this road that didn't have any residents on, it was the school bus route. Okay. It was the 340 is north of uh, Gallery, mm -hmm. west of Garfield. <coughs> uh, I don't think a, a half mile was a river crossing, but it didn't disrupt anything because we checked on that. So where, where's, where's the contractor working at? This particular location, I mean, they're, they're going across the county uh, with the pipeline. This particular location is just about a mile north of uh, Gowrie. Uh, is it by Poet or is it from Poet? It is south and east of Poet. Where is it from the town? North of Gowrie. What the Gowrie is? What the company is? I mean, does that Poet, like, is Poet a French company? Who, who are they? Who's the like, who, 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 who's the owner okay. of Poet? Okay. It doesn't have anything to do with this item. You can bring that up like a citizen's yeah. opportunity. You guys are everything. You're a businessman, you're this, you're that. Like, I went to school for engineering, I'm not an engineer. So I ask questions. So okay. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try to ask questions politely. No, you can don't mind. If you to stop talking, I'll stop talking. Okay. And and after stop. citizen's opportunity is one away from this. So two away, I'm sorry. Call oh, questions. Okay, we've had a good question called. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Item seven carries. Item number eight is to approve the revised list of unpaved roads designated as no snow removal. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve the list of unpaved roads for 2016 17. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Randy? Yeah, um, the deck change was uh, south of Landon. There was a half mile deleted. And after talking with uh, Landowner and the school bus, uh, uh, it, was, it was determined that if we remove that, it would be a safer situation for their route and how they would pick up uh, the children and so forth. So it seemed to make a lot of sense to delete that half mile. And then, and then we added uh, uh, one full mile uh, that is uh, 210 Street between Taylor and Union Avenue. That would be west of Duncombe. Uh, we 
talked to the uh, motor grader operator, <coughs> Dale, Dale Anderson, our other motor grader operator, talked to the adjacent landowners, and uh, nobody had any objection. Okay. Questions or comments on the 2016 no snow removal? Step up. Just so I stop and interrupt, Daniel, why can't I ask questions? I'm going to put up some right out no, this. No hunting signs. It sounds like the new agenda. Or what, how's your meeting work? No, right after this item is citizens' opportunity to address the board. That will be in your opportunity. All right. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate your comment. Any other questions or comments on the revised list of unpaved roads designated as no snow removal? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Item 8 carries. It's now a citizen's opportunity to address the board with items not on the agenda. Uh, it's, kind of, it's two questions, I'm going to ask them separately. So my dad, like, when he, when he died, like, he died like three and a half years ago, he bought some new hunting signs. And opened up my property, and the country was like on a gravel road and stuff, so I was just trying to get your advice on where to put the signs up at. So, I like, my friends can still hunt there, but, um, like, now just random people can come by and, and just say they talked to, like, my brother or my uncle, or, you know, I'm just trying to do it legally. So I talked to, like, the county attorney or... We could have the attorney address that, or the sheriff address that. Or well, as far as the no hunting signs go, you just put them on your, you have a, is there a fence or fence? There's, I mean, there's two field entrances, but I mean, in the county, don't you own, technically the property owner owns the middle of the highway, don't they? Yeah. Yes. You so I live, that's, that's on a gravel road, so. Okay. Just, if you have a fence there, or you have a gate, put them, put them right on that, because once they're... The field, just I put them on the field entrances, yep. and then because where the CRP is, just put it by the CRP, so that way there's correct. people people can see it visually. Right, because once once that sign's there, and they read that sign, then they've been notified that they can. All right, um, all right I appreciate everybody's input, I'll just put them where I want them, and if anybody has any questions, they can just ask me, or ask somebody, and I'm sure it'll make it to me. And then uh, my other next question was, uh, like, so in the county, like, I went to school for EMS, Emergency Medical uh, Services. So, like, who coordinates, like, the county stuff? Like, because you have, like, all these EMS services. You have fire department, <coughs> fire board. You have, like, emergency services director and all this stuff. So, like, who actually, who's in charge of making sure, like, the hospital and the fire department in Fort Dodge and all the fire departments in the country, I mean, in the... And, and the country do the right thing. Do you want to go Carrie? Would you like for Carrie? So um, I'm Carrie Prescott. I'm the health officer for Webster yeah. County. I work at the health department. And where um, our board of health is starting to look at those governing rules to see who has those chain of commands, I can give you my contact information and keep you abreast of those those um, activities. Who's like? How have you guys hired somebody? You used to work for the fire department, like. Scott Forbes. Scott Forbes. Scott Forbes, Forbes is the emergency manager, but he doesn't, his duties don't really include deciding who, how to coordinate those. He's always involved in that and he helps coordinate it, but he's not the one that would say, okay, this department does this area. He doesn't do that. I mean, because I, I help her run around here, but I don't live in the city. So like, I live three miles east of this town on a farm. So I've been like an EMS for like, 13 hours since I like before I had to put you back way back in like 2002. And like I kind of, I don't even know Scott Forbes, but like I was on the fire department and whatever. And like, I, I don't know, like I just think like if there's a wrong thing around here, but they just use an excuse. Like, I mean, like today I, I got fired or terminated from the fire department because I didn't make it through probation. And then I got terminated from the hospital, which is a non huge, it's the largest employer in the city, but it's a non profit. And like you know, I'm like I'm cussing out Ted Bond. I'm doing all this crazy stuff because like I don't like I don't have parents, so I don't have anybody to ask. Like I don't have anybody to get advice from. So like when I do all this stuff, like I'm trying to raise my hand. I'm trying to I'm trying to, I'm trying to be very polite, but I don't know how like your system works. Like I don't I have seen all you guys on the, on the board, but I don't like I don't, I don't I've never been in politics. I'm I'm just trying to work with. So John, if I can, we we would definitely listen to all your concerns and all your questions and we would help you walk through all of those questions that you have if you want to connect with me. All right, so and again, I didn't talk, I didn't talk to the microphone, but I get closer. Here, from here, from here. All right, so um, Pat Reed, he lives in the country, like I can buy a box or something. And like, the, you know, the, the, the fire chief is trying to get rid of him and like, 
they call it like terminating because you know like you're the head of HR, she lives out by Manson, which is out by all these ethanol plants, which is by two railroad tracks, which is transportation. And that's why I did the army. Like I, I literally like I was a transportation service for the military, the military so it almost killed me. And we got mad at that. I did Afghanistan, and like three years later, I found out I, I can't even be in the army anymore. So like now I'm back here, and I don't know what I am. Like am I a farmer? Am I a businessman? Like because I've been a, I've been an EMT. I've been a volunteer forever. Like I was I was an EMT, and now I'm a certified paramedic, and now I'm this, and then now I'm that. And like I'm not asking you to tell me what to do. But like I'm just trying, I gotta figure out how this works. Like, how often do you guys have meetings? Every week. Every, Every week. Tuesday is time. Yep. Right. And then what happens to the rest of your meeting? We have meetings scheduled throughout the week. We're all set on different committees, so we oh, okay. So that's like divided powers. So then how each, which like, how how do they how do they select each of you? Do you like they call you that large or how do they? Well, how we all have the districts, so districts. we cover different areas. I believe you're in my team. Yeah, I see. Listen, my district. You know, I'm. I think you know, I'm. I might be a Democrat. He might be a Republican. We all know each other, so I just try to be a. You know, I'm just trying to be. A, I'm just trying to work. I call it, my, my dad called me nice, like I'm just trying to work with everybody. Okay. And if we can help you with any other questions like this, how this process works, how Carrie's process works, we'll be more than happy to. All right. So you, you're the public health officer? I am. I am. All right. So where's your office located at? Um, I'm across the street over in the old the bank over at the old bank building. All right. And I'll give you my contact information. All right. After she gives me your contact information, I can just walk out and speak. No, you're more than welcome. Right. You get Thank you. You've all been very, very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Any other I'll give you that one. I don't need it. Any other questions or comments for the citizens' opportunity to address the board? Board of Supervisor Committee reports. Just working with the fireball room. Okay. Uh, last Friday, I wanted to uh, make it public that the uh, uh, Lewis Park Foundation had CJ down there. I helped them. We cut up some wood and a lot of down trees and the limitless parts so you can't even use the uh, use the pass. But uh, it was really nice. I want to just put a shout out there for CJ to have their employees come down. It's a nice thing for them to do that. They didn't get a lot this time because it was kind of short notice. But uh, so I want to thank CJ uh, and the people from out there are Heather Farrell, Tammy Palos, uh, Tiffany Weiss, Jen Harvey, and Teddy White. Um, all helped, uh, had a good time throwing branches through that big chopper, sure. had a great time. So, just wanted to thank CJ. Mr. Fletcher. Nothing this week. Mr. Sanger. Uh, two items uh, quickly. The first one is to remind everyone that Thursday night the uh, LifeWorks Foundation and the LifeWorks Organization are uh, having their annual banquet, and it is a major for them, and if you're so inclined, I'm surely sure they would appreciate your attendance. Uh, you could certainly come and pay the door if you wish. Uh, secondly, I attended last Friday the uh, um, Iowa County Association uh, meeting, and uh, they're still on track for 2018 November. And if the weather holds, it's entirely possible even earlier than that. It's an incredible fast track. And if you've gone over there, you notice that they're moving dirt and going like crazy. Um, and they have completed now at least one of the detours uh, to uh, and repave the road, et cetera, et cetera. So it's going really, really well under the circumstances this time. I will be going to attending the uh, next DOT meeting in Ames probably next week. Okay. All right. Any other motion to adjourn? I have a question for Ron. Uh, you got a public hearing November 3rd. You want to come up and tell the messenger about that? I think they've heard they want public hearing on the zone. I think which I was about to turn down there. Hey, I walked down to see you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
majority of the, the agenda. And it's open to the public. Lonnie, I'd like to reiterate again that what the gentleman stopped me about. I'm sure there's nothing that the planning and zoning can do about it, except to mention it, if you will. Uh, but the, the concentration of, of facilities is a concern, yet in the same breath, it's set, I think, easily by the legislature, isn't that? Uh, correct. When confinement or animal feeding operations get to a certain scale, um, the state just has a mandate regulations that guide the development and um, spacing, you know, number of, uh, you know, as far as I know, there is no limit on the number of, it's more a matter of if the right location uh, meets the standard that can be built. And according to this individual, the uh, standards certainly should be looked at and, and possibly changed. Yes, and, and I think that's a larger discussion in uh, other counties as well. So, but Webster County uh, hopefully is, is showing leadership in, in this area.